In this video I'm going to show you how to rebuild your starter for a K24E motor. That is the part number for the Hitachi starter. These are the brushes that I ordered from Nissan. Brand new. The part number for those. Uh, pretty much I would go to start my car and it wouldn't click. Absolutely nothing would happen. So. It's going to be a, a brush issue. So I can show you how to take this apart and how to fix it. I'm not going to show you how to install the starter in the vehicle, but um, it's pretty simple. It's just two bolts, one there and one there. I'm not sure what that third bolt hole is for. All you need to do this is a flathead, a Phillips, an 8mm, and a 12mm wrench. So let me get this set up. First what you want to do, this is the bottom part of the starter. You want to take your 12 mil, loosen this bolt off here. Or nut, loosen the nut off. Okay, so this is free. You want to take your 8 mil, make sure it's loosening. These should be pretty easy. Oops. There may be a little bit of uh, pressure put on the bolts. These are already pre loosened for me. So I'll take these out. They're fairly long. Okay. Done with that. Take your Phillips. Remove these two. You could also use a flathead. But I'm going to use a Phillips. And I don't have a garage to work in, so all of my videos for fixing stuff will be done pretty much indoors. I'm actually going to be swapping an SR20 into my car here pretty quick. And uh, I will be rebuilding that motor inside as well. So once you have those two big bolts taken out, you can pull the starter apart. Those are your planetary gears, you don't want to mess with those. So you take this cover off. Make sure the hole the holes in the cover line up where the holes for the for the bolts go. You can move that off to the side. And we're left with this here. This pulls apart with a little bit of wiggling. Okay. This is what your starter is going to look like. You can take this out, it's just a giant magnet sits in there and put that off to the side too. So now to, since we took this cover off and those two little bolts there, um, this is what sends the power to your starter and often the brushes here will wear down as these ones are perfectly fine and these two are shot. So when I go to send power to the starter this is a direct line for the power on the starter and it wasn't properly making contact with the copper here causing the starter to spin so all we're going to do is just take those out replace them with my brand new OEM Nissan parts and then uh, the starter should work perfectly fine again and it only cost me uh, like $12 for this they had to overnight it from Japan for me so. And that was at a dealership too. So pretty much, I'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way. Take your flathead here and just lift these tabs off. Push them off to the side. It's not a big deal. I just kind of wedge it off. It's fine that it flew off. As long as you don't lose it, I can put that back on pretty easily. And then these just slide right out, the one does at least, maybe the other side. Of 
Oops. I don't want this one to fly out. There we go. So then this is the old one. And my new one. As you can see, the brushes are considerably in, uh, sorry, they are in considerably better shape. So throw those ones away. Just going to put this back in there, like this. Long side goes to the left of it. Tuck the wire in there. Put the other one in the other side. And now it's pretty much brand new. Push that up top. I actually need some clamps because you should push down on this to hold the wire up away from the other um, brushes there. But pretty much, if this doesn't fall off for you, you can pretty much just use your fingers and click it back in. And then your brushes are fixed. So let me just fix the other one as well. Okay, you got to put in, takes a little bit of force, but you bend it up and it rests on the brush, like that. Now I'm going to quickly run out and grab a set of pliers to crimp this down and then we'll continue the video. So this is what it's going to look like when everything is installed correctly here. So what you want to do your part of the starter here. Make sure that your connections are properly cleaned up. I just took uh, like 200 grit sandpaper and just lightly sanded off all the carbon buildup on there to make it shiny again. What you want to do is take this part, this facing down on the starter there, and I don't think I'm going to get this on video, but you have to push these in one by one all the way across until you get this to sit on the starter like to seat itself properly one second okay so I have it put on here um, sometimes if you're having issues you're going to want to flip it over and push this thing all the way in well it will go back to the same spot all the time because it's magnetic Oh, some dogs coming in the house here. But that, if you push it up, it's just easier to to get the top part with the brushes on correctly. So when you have that all assembled there, just want to make sure that your rubber um, sealer there, grommet, uh, lines up with the notch. Because if it's not, once the camera focuses, if it's not, when you go to put the, your top plate back on, it can only go one one way. The same with the rubber grommet there, like it has to go over top of it. Otherwise, when you go to put this that plate back on, it won't um, line up properly, and you'll cross thread your little tiny bolts. I don't know why the camera's so unfocused. So I'm going to put this together because I can't uh, do this on video. And when it's put together, I will come back and talk to you in a second. Okay, so I have the two smaller bolts, well, screws, put back in. Um, what I suggest using is maybe a pick or something. Um, once you have this top piece put on and in line with uh, the grommet there, um, it's best to take a pick or something and uh, move it around so it will, um, you know, go in easily. Otherwise, you're going to be stripping it, or you're going to be spending 20 minutes just taking the top plate off, putting it back on, taking it off, putting it back on to get it to line up. Anyways, since we have that put back together, pretty much, can you uh, just reinstall this main part? I usually put those two long bolts through. Um, crap, I didn't really think of how to set this up. One second. Okay, so I get the bolts put through, pretty much line it up with the holes that are near the planetary gears. Earlier that cover came off, and since I have the bolts already put through, it can only 
go one way and slide hopefully right on there. Was that right? Oh my goodness. Should be able to do this. There we go. Might have to wiggle it around a little bit. But, get those seated. Okay, so get those started. Um, tighten them down. Reconnect your line here. And then I'm also going to bench test the starter to prove to you that um, it is working. I actually should have done the bench test before I replaced the brushes. But believe me, it wasn't working. The car left me stranded. Um, good thing for bump starts. So I will uh, put this all back together and then I'll just show you a quick uh, bench test showing that the starter now does work. And then I will uh, put it back in my car. Alright, finally I'm going to show you the bench test of the starter that I rebuilt. Um, for those of you who do not know how to do a bench test, you want to hook up jumper cables directly to the battery, positive and negative. You want to ground the negative anywhere on the starter. I just choose right here because it's easiest to get at. And then the other uh, stud coming out of the solenoid for the starter there, you get the bottom one where the brushes were installed. The power goes through here, in through the solenoid, blah blah blah, comes out, turns the starter, solenoid kicks, your gear is out, and we'll spin it. Um, I actually have rubber gloves for electrician work. It's totally not necessary, but I have the equipment, therefore I am going to use it. And uh, you take a starter, jeez, uh, you take a screwdriver or something, and you want to touch this lead right here, which is the signal that uh, when you turn the car on, it sends a 12 volt signal to here telling the solenoid to open up which will allow the power to go to the starter and start your car. So you want to connect the power side here and uh, that side there. And I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to have it on camera most likely. But I'll set this up just so you can see that uh, the starter gear does kick out and it will start the car. Put my gloves on because safety first. that noise isn't anything bad inside there. Shouldn't be. Well, you get the gist of it. It works. Actually, I might as well show you how to bench test as well. Just take this, like so, and touch them. <laughs> keep the best connection you can. I might uh, take this apart and clean this or regrease it because it's making some noise, but that's just due to the planetary gears. If yours is making noise like that, take it apart, take that cover off where the planetary gears are, and just pack it full of grease. I just use the same grease that I use for my ball joints because quite honestly a starter is not used that often. It is used every time to start the vehicle, but for like four seconds. So, um, really any type of grease should be fine, but if you really want to use something that's proper, I'm not sure what to use, but Google will have the answer for you. Anyways, if um, you enjoyed this video and it helped you replace your starter, or repair your starter rather, uh, without having to spend, you know, $60, $70, on a brand new one, um, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks. Bye-bye.